Welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Thank you for joining us today. My special guest is Mayor Richard Venable of Sullivan County, and we have all kinds of things to chit chat about today. Thank you for being here today. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you. First and foremost, we just got the mandate. I guess it went through last night to wear masks yes. because of everything going on with the pandemic. Talk to me a little bit about the mandate. I will. We, uh, we were one of six counties in Tennessee who had not invoked a mandate. Uh, the best uh, advice I could get from our local health department and from our uh, contacts in the state who we talked to at least three times a week mm -hmm. uh, was that we can slow the spread and I think it's common sense. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. uh, we do every little thing we can do to slow the spread, we'll be better off. Wearing masks, uh, it's an inconvenience to some folks, but normally it's not. Uh, some folks have breathing problems and, and we exempt those. Uh, there are no mask police. Mm -hmm. There will not be any, anybody out uh, fining people for not wearing a mask. So uh, it's been accepted well by those who uh, are really aware of the disease and how it's uh, being transmitted. Uh, uh, I would say right now the majority probably doesn't agree with it. I was wondering why are we exempting churches like when people go to service? I mean you would think with a lot of people going to church that that would be a place to wear a mask. Well that was in the governor's orders and uh, we can't override the governor's orders and he ordered some time ago um, actually probably a month and a half ago that uh, churches were exempt. I see churches on uh, TV holding their services and they're, they're uh, uh, going along with social distancing. Mm -hmm. They don't have full houses, most of them. I've seen one that did. Mm -hmm. But I think places where you can exhibit some discipline and uh, you have somebody in charge, which is a pastor, and he's convinced of that. So, but. As far as our order, I, I can't override the governor's order, mm -hmm. so we put it in our order. Now, what you said was slow the spread, and that's important because this is a very contagious virus, and we're going to get to the point where most of us are going to end up getting this virus some degree or not to really be able to stop this virus from growing. But slowing the spread is what is so important. We don't want to overwhelm the hospitals, and is that what you're thinking? That's one of our major concerns, uh, and as I look at the reports, we have less capacity here in Northeast Tennessee than any place in the state by wow. far. Really? So if we, uh, last week we had 100, over 100 cases reported. Uh, we could easily overwhelm our system. We talk with the ballot every week, my uh, director of health, and we keep a running total of how many ICU beds we have, how many hospital beds we have. We're fine right now but we've got to, we cannot uh, tolerate an additional 100 cases every week. Mm -hmm. We'll be at 1,000 within 10 weeks. Oh, yes. And we cannot, our healthcare system would become overwhelmed at that point. It surprises me the anger people have over this. And they recognize it's not taking away freedoms, it's not a law, it's a kindness. It's saying thinking of others, please put others first because you might be healthy, especially these young kids today, but you don't know who you're talking to that has a compromised member in their family. And to just say to wear a mask, hey, I don't like wearing it. It smudges my lipstick. <laughs> I don't like it at all. But if it's something I can do right now to keep our town, our country, our, our world safer, I think it's a small price to pay. Well, I think uh, uh, the one of the things that hurt us is the disagreement among experts. True. So I would tell everybody to use their own common sense. If they cough or they have a sneeze, mm -hmm. is it better to contain it right there or spew it across the room at your neighbor? It's a matter of respect. We, I think everybody is aware that this probably doesn't uh, protect you from the uh, COVID-19. Uh, those are, but it will protect you or, and your neighbor from a droplet from penetrating your system. If I have droplets that are uh, mm -hmm. infected, it should be contained in that mask. Uh, there are many illustrations of that. Mm -hmm. um, but again, people use good common sense. We'll, we'll be yes. fine. My, my girlfriend who is in the medical field, and she said, you know, 
why do you think surgeons wear the masks in surgery? It really does make a difference. She said, what people don't recognize is the viral load is very important. By wearing the mask, you are lessening that viral load. If somebody gets it, they're not getting it as heavy. And then she said that makes a very big difference. So again, I don't like wearing the mask. A lot of people don't. And you say there's controversy, sure. But I'd rather err on the side of caution. And for right now, I don't have a problem with that at all. If it's going to keep somebody a little safer, I'm all for it. So I guess that's what we're going to do for now. Um, let's talk about the Bristol race coming up. How do you think that's going, or what are your concerns there? Well, it's been highly debated in the area, and I, uh, uh, for the last month I've talked with uh, Jerry Caldwell's track and, and uh, the people who represent the BMS and uh, talked with the governor's uh, chief of staff and his representatives. And uh, at one point in time, several weeks ago, you, they had to decide go, no, go, no, go. And we have one of the best uh, records in the state of Tennessee. Now, we spiked now mm -hmm. before the race. We have a spike, but that's probably because of vacations. But uh, I know the protocols that BMS has put into place that, uh, they, that we will uh, be safe in the track if people follow them and they're there to enforce them. Unlike our mask mandate, mm -hmm. we don't have people out enforcing that, but if, when you go on BMS property, uh, you're going to uh, need to follow their rules. Right. So they, their rules are that they'll keep social distancing when you go in the track. I understand they're having, you have to have an appointment to show up at the gate oh. and which gate to show up at. Hmm. And once you get there, um, you can go in, and once you get to your seat, you can take your mask off. If you go out to get a hot dog, you're going to put your mask back on. Okay. And, and they're going to patrol that, and they're going to enforce that. So we have an opportunity to have a good experience with this race. Uh, it'll, it'll depend on the common sense of the people here. We think a lot of local people will get to go back to BMS that haven't been there in a few years. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the, uh, the attendance might be as much local as out. So. Have you heard how ticket sales are going? No, I haven't talked to Jerry about it, but I, I have been interested in the uh, percentage of people that are local and those that are coming in. Uh, we started off with, uh, thinking maybe 25% local, and uh, it appears there are considerably more local people go coming this year than in the past. Okay, well, that, we'll see how that goes. It could be our shining moment or not. <laughs> we'll find out. So what else would you like to talk about? What about some upcoming events that we should be concerned about? or? What about the budget, passing the budget? How's the, is that something we need to be concerned about? How's that going? Well, events, uh, obviously, uh, Fun Fest is canceled. Uh, yes. uh, Rhythm and Roots is canceled. And those are uh, uh, events that are un unlike the race where you do rub shoulders with your compatriots. Oh, yes. Uh, at the race, we're, they're going to. But uh, I understand the cancellation. I agree with those cancellations. Uh, we're still at a 50, 50 limit rule. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I know I lost control of a crowd at the courthouse last month, so I'm going to have to be stricter on our commission meetings oh. uh, and limit the number of people that can be in the courtroom. I we, see. Yeah, we'll stop uh, recognitions and, and uh, proclamations for the next while. We won't have crowds of people in the courtroom. I'm encouraging our commissioners to meet electronically as many as can. I don't like to conduct business that way but it's what we have to do now. So mm -hmm. if I can have uh, half the commissioners show up for a meeting and the rest attending electronically, I think that's the optimum for us to do a good job. Good. So let's talk about the budget. Ah, the budget's always a <laughs> fun uh, topic. It's always a good topic. <laughs> well, our revenues, our revenues from property taxes are holding in there very, very well. Mm -hmm. We've seen significant decline in revenues in uh, Bristol Kingsport. Uh, uh, actually, uh, an anomaly, uh, sales tax revenues are up on areas outside the municipalities of Bristol hmm. and Kingsport. Kind of hard to explain, but I, yeah. I believe we've uh, changed buying habits. I think people aren't coming into town to the big boxes and things of that nature are coming into town. I think they're maybe uh, buying at convenience stores and Dollar Generals and things of that because we don't have a grocery store in the unincorporated area of Sullivan County. But nevertheless, uh, we're going to see a decline in revenue for our schools, and that's going to hurt. Mm. Um, we know when we pass the budget here within oh, 10, 12 days that there have to be cuts in it. 
-hmm. and we're looking at those cuts now and how deep they have to go. We've got requests for uh, spending, uh, new spending of nearly two million dollars. That's probably not going to happen. Oh, yeah. We will end, we'll look at these, the committees of the commission will look at these uh, individually and mm -hmm. see what's essential and what's not. So we'll pass the budget uh, and have its controller by the end of this month and we'll be in, hopefully uh, 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 everybody can share in the, in the cuts. Gotcha. What about the high school? How's that coming along? Well, uh, our high school, of course, is slated open in the fall of 2021. Uh, we've seen no slowdown. Uh, the Department of Education says that they're on schedule to open then. Uh, the middle school is open and uh, functioning uh, functioned well when it was opened in January. So we'll, uh, the schools have filed a plan, depending, uh, and it's important that people understand this, and I'm glad you brought that up. If our experience is bad and we have a widespread spread of this coronavirus, it could stop us from opening schools. Mm. It possibly could because those metrics are set by the state. And so if folks want their kids to go back to school and be in the classrooms, they'll do everything they can to stop the spread of this disease. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three different phases. It will be fully classroom, it will be a hybrid, and then the last phase will be everybody at home learning off uh, iPads. Not a good way to teach people. Sure. Wow. Okay, so like I said, depending on how we do these next few weeks can make a big difference in how things proceed for the rest of the year. Well, I think Dr. Cox has worked really hard with our health department uh, to develop a plan and implement it. So I'm confident that we'll have kids in the classroom hopefully on August 5th, I believe. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be super. So anything else you'd like to touch on? Just that uh, our success thus far on stopping the spread is, is related to the community and their adherence to the guidance received from government. Uh, there's no enforcement of this mask and it's this more of a leadership and, and uh, pro uh, item. Uh, people elected me as the leader of Sullivan County as, as mayor and I've got to give them the best advice I can and that's what I gave them last week was advice on how they could protect their loved ones, their families, their kids and their grandparents particularly. Very good and on that note we'll We'll, we'll finish for now. Thank you so much for being with us today, Mayor Richard Venable. Very good information. I appreciate it and I support you. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us for a closer look. We'll be back this time next week with another edition. Have a beautiful week.